Areas of interest across the Indian Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 13th. Well, what we've got right now are still the remnants of Nandus persisting in the Indian Ocean and it blink and you miss it. Uh, during our uh, two-day absence from the Tropical Weather Bulletin, we had Tropical Storm Pakar, which has now died off to the northeast of the Philippine Islands. That was the 91st storm of the year so far. In the Atlantic, it's 170 days until the hurricane season begins next year, but we're still looking out for any potential late season surprises or late year surprises this year. The season of course ended November 30th, but you never know what we might still see, but nothing. In the South Pacific, Invest 97P is dying off and is going to turn, uh, well, our analyst team had it as a tropical storm briefly, I'm not sure whether it was, uh, but right now it looks like it is peaking in its wind and is on the way out. In the southern Indian Ocean we have an 80% chance of development now for a rapidly organising system, uh, still in the Australian region at the moment, but it will gradually move further west and enter the southwest Indian Ocean. Uh, so this could be our next tropical cyclone. And in the North Indian Ocean, the remnants of Mandus, our team have put that at 40% chance of regeneration, a few models on board with that, and now a 10% chance behind it, another area of interest that will creep into the Bay of Bengal and could go on to affect Sri Lanka or the east coast of India. So busy, but first looking at the Atlantic satellite imagery, you can see not much going on here anymore. Uh, you can still see that tro uh, that's extra tropical system, which was the Invest, right on the very limb of that image there, uh, near the horizon. Uh, towards the north there, to the east of the United States, there's a non-tropical low there as well. Eastern Pacific looks like this, just a small little area of convection bubbling up in the uh, Eastern East Pacific and a lot more out there in the more open part of the ocean, but nothing special uh, It doesn't look like we're going to see anything uh, tropical and this is our focus point uh, the Indian Ocean as a whole there you can see India itself near the top of the image and right down the bottom right hand side is that area of interest 80% which you can see has built up more convection recently but let's concentrate on X Mandus which is off the west coast of India there about to move over the Maldives the northernmost islands of it at least uh, in fact no it's those islands further north pardon me um, part of India and that will continue to move west northwesterly and could regenerate into a tropical cyclone briefly and here is a closer look at the southern Indian Ocean system which has really started to look better in the last few frames with that big blow up of convection. It is heavily sheared uh, with potentially um, exposed in the northeast but it looks like a circulation may be developing and it could be designated as early as tomorrow. And this is the Western Pacific. You can see Pakar there from earlier on and just look how quickly it decided to completely get destroyed there, probably by wind shear as that uh, whole frontal system there got stretched out that the storm was sort of part of. Fascinating to watch. Uh, it was never going to last very long, but just how quickly it decomposed is really a sight to behold. And here's a wider shot of that Indian Ocean picture uh, with the enhanced infrared where you can see a lot of uh, goings-ons there and that South Indian Ocean system probably getting the coldest cloud tops of the whole basin right now. And looking towards the uh, Pacific side and the Australian region there, not too much going on. Um, a big trail of cloudiness uh, stretching from uh, Vanuatu down through Fiji and down towards New Zealand where that uh, system currently is. Let's check the sea surface temperatures which are still fairly decent off the coast of Mexico for what it's worth, close to 30 degrees Celsius, but generally it's much cooler out in the open eastern Pacific. The Atlantic is really cooling down now after the season has finished. The western Caribbean really the only place is still with 28 degrees Celsius waters. The Gulf Stream is still a little bit there as well, but it's not really the sea surface temperatures that's the problem, it's just that there's not really any systems. And that's what we get in the late season. 
Let's take a look at the Indian Ocean and panning a bit more south now that we're entering the Southern Hemisphere seasons. And you can see there that the uh, 28 degrees ice therm uh, extends out quite a way, although not so much in the Australian region, a little bit behind there. Uh, but out in the northern part of Australia, extremely warm SSTs, 30 degrees, maybe even higher in some spots there for any uh, systems that start to form a little bit later on. In the Western Pacific, Pakar is actually still over uh, warm enough waters, but it was just completely ripped apart. Uh, but the Philippine Sea still warm enough for any more systems, although it's getting less likely. Here is the SST anomalies. It's above average in the Western Pacific. It is slightly below average in parts of the uh, western part of the Australian region in the Southeast Indian Ocean. And the La Nina effect still well and truly there in the Eastern Pacific, although rumors that it might be coming to an end soon. Oceanic heat content down in the South Pacific, uh, looking quite decent and expanding through Vanuatu, certainly there at the Solomon Islands and towards Fiji. In the Western Pacific, you can see it's still fairly uh, decent in various parts of the tropical West Pack and of course in the equatorial regions, but it is still starting, uh, continuing to simmer down a little. Let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days and this is what the Indian Ocean has in store. You can see Mandus there potentially reforming and that other system getting rotation there in those uh, images and possibly two competing rotations there which slows that so it become an actual tropical cyclone. Good question. We've marked there the area that Mandus might try to regenerate all across the Arabian Sea and then there's that next system that comes into the picture as we get towards day three, four and five. In the southern hemisphere, just south of the equator, in the same region, we have this going on, this tropical cyclone, that's the one we're monitoring down there. And that, it looks like it's going to, actually the GFS has changed its tune on this system a lot, uh, even in the short range, it will struggle quite a bit for that five day period. Probably will become a tropical cyclone for a little while, but it's just not really uh, structured very well there, as you can clearly see on the wind profile. And and that really uh, prevents it from getting any real intensity. Longer range, what happens to it next? Well, we can see the North Indian Ocean as well. That system just about moves over Sri Lanka, its influence, but really not many, not much strong winds. Uh, that system in the Southern Indian Ocean though turns around and possibly reaches hurricane equivalent status as it drops down towards the Southeast, being chased by another system there, which may well develop into another tropical cyclone. You can see it there getting some rotation. So interesting turn of events there. The GFS just yesterday and the day before was having having it go sort of towards the Masserine Islands. Well, that's all the serious stuff done with, not too much today. At this point, you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. Hoodies to keep you warm in winter, and if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, our t-shirts as well, including the Still Waiting for Hone t-shirt for those in the Central Pacific, really, really waiting for that storm to finally arrive. In the Scilly range, we're looking at the Western Pacific here for a potential system in the very long range, day 10 to 16. It's really towards the end of that 16 day period that a typhoon starts to develop. This would be very unusual for the time of year to get a typhoon forming up there in the Philippine Sea to the west of the Mariana Islands. But <laughs> I guess never say never. That is after Christmas there. That's what, the 27th, 28th of December there. So that would be really remarkable if that was to happen. It's extremely unlikely. Southern Hemisphere, keep watching. Um, what was that system? It's getting very murky and messy down here. It might still be the same system there that starts to do a zigzag now, turning west again and blowing up again in terms of its size after weakening and shriveling up and almost reaching hurricane equivalent status again. We'll have to watch that back and see whether that is actually the same system because that would certainly be one for the What Might Have Been series, I think. Uh, quite a crazy model run there. Certainly out of the same energy, I think, uh, and very unpredictable South Indian Ocean by the looks of things. Well, <clears throat> what happened on this day? On December 13th, 2006, we had Typhoon Utor, which was peaking right now as a Category 2. It was a second uh, Category 2 peak, actually. It moved through the Philippines as a, a significant typhoon as well, a bad year for them. Um, and it was about to die off, actually. It was going to succumb very quickly, not as quick as Pakar, uh, but in the next 48 hours from this point, Utor would start to shrivel up and die off. A quite a small core, usually 
usually when they when the eye wall goes it's curtains for those storms especially at this late time of year hostile conditions so where are we up to right now then in the atlantic the next name if we do get any more doubtful now is owen in the eastern pacific even more doubtful seymour and in the central pacific maybe even more doubtful that we will see hone although uh, statistically speaking no in the western pacific we've now had pakar and the next name is sanvu in the north indian ocean next up is mocha and who knows that might happen if the gfs has anything to say about it we're just one storm away from the annual average and i'm pretty sure we'll just about eclipse that in the australian region the next name is darian the southwest indian ocean chaniso and in the south pacific it's harley that's all from tonight's tropical weather bulletin We'll be back again tomorrow night.